cultural workers are performing the labor of uh, moving hearts and minds through acts of culture. If we go back 15 or so years, I was uh, I got heavily involved with um, an environmental justice organization in the Philippines, and through that work, um, what was discovered was that while you know the scientists and a lot of the people, uh, it was a military toxics campaign. Mm -hmm. So it was basically the U.S. military bases in the Philippines. I learned that through the arts, I was able to contribute something that the scientists and the environmental technicians and all those folks and policy people weren't quite capturing and that movements need artists and that artists are not just sort of like supplementary but actually are often the the carriers of the message and able to move hearts and minds in ways that other aspects of of movements aren't so i think with this project my first instinct was to be more of a fly on the wall and observe what was going on before I came in. So um, I felt that I was really blessed in a way because I'd worked with APAL in like early iterations since my history of working with community-based art and arts education went back to, like I said, to the turn of the 2000s. And I had some familiarity with who they were. I'm coming in representing like a theater organization and representing being like this person who's kind of studying and also like supporting but also that that they came first like their work and their voices were the first thing that anybody heard so when i came in i felt like i was really sort of plugging in fitting in where i could where i could and reminded them that i'm coming to support with tools but a lot of the tools i have already i take a renewed um, belief and conviction in the power of storytelling with theater being you know the primary I think setting container and set of, of techniques and tools a typical day would involve me coming in the the youth would lead lead a workshop so it would be something like gender sexual orientation uh, they did one on white supremacy, like these terms and trying to understand these like big isms. So I was always, I was trying to make sure we covered, you know, everything from, like I said, like them leading stuff and to me kind of giving like early lessons on like what is theater, what is guerrilla theater, what are the aspects of it, what are the different roles that you might participate in, let's give you some roles, let's do some writing, let's do some editing. Um, and then let's get on our feet. And so um, they got a chance to see that this is really like about how they're going to interrupt and and uh, carve spaces. Um, and then this is going to be what they want it to be. So it was like it it was each day was actually different, um, other than with the exception of like some kind of collective warm up. To me, the most important thing was the story coming out. It's the story being staged. They're gonna laugh, and sometimes laughter is a way to deal with with this. This is a hard topic. I take like um, like a profound inspiration, you know, sense of inspiration because their leadership blew me away. Like their sense of leadership, that young people, you know, we all say like young people are the future and all that, but like they were really the present. Like they were leading. And I've worked with youth before, but I think that there was a way that, especially for this, these communities and these young people who don't have as much of a visibility, um, to see them in leadership was powerful. But I saw people step up, you know, young people step up. Some memorize suddenly they memorize their script, or suddenly you know um, they put their foot in it and they really did it. The transformation happened, you know. They were right there with them and it didn't matter whether they laughed or messed up because they were really paying attention to even to serious topics. And that was probably the most important impact was the people at the May Arts Festival, which was the young people and their families and other people in the community, um, having just visceral response and support. 
the fortunate thing about having performances, public performances. You know, we were talking about, you know, violence and we're talking about folks seeing their own friends killed and shot and this kind of thing is happening for these young Southeast Asian kids. Like they come in laughing and joking and all that, but but unless you really are paying attention and asking them what's going on, you may not realize that they're experiencing a lot of violence and struggle and, you know, challenges like even just coming to school or even showing up. One of the things was they showed up. And if they show up, then, you know, that's just as important as what they, they perform. There was one young man who, I wasn't sure if he was gonna show up till the day of the show. And also he hadn't practiced as much because he wasn't there, but he showed up, he did his piece, and it was um, one of the most like profound and I think pivotal moments of the show because he told his personal story and he'd gone through so much loss and so much like depression and 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 he just told it. Southeast Asian youth are still the are still marginalized and I think that I really feel more convicted around trying to support these voices, you know. A lot of these young people like they're own families came from escaping war-torn situations um, and some lived on refugee camps and stuff like that and a lot of these the characters that they wrote turned out to be people that they knew there was like a figure like an older sibling that's like trying to who was in gangs and who's trying to like pull them out of that and then there's like the parents who work too hard are not available and maybe and there was actually some like abuse topics too and I noticed these coming up in several skits. There was always this element of family, like of family coming together. As a Filipino American who comes from a, um, you know, a different Southeast Asian group, um, on a surface level, I think that it, it could be seen as, oh, we're you know grouping somebody with somebody, um, and she must, they must know something about each other's stories. And I think on some level, we do. We look similarly. We look like we could be family. And on the other hand our stories are very unique and vastly different. You know, I think the tendency in the United States and even the very well, the most well-intentioned, culturally well-intentioned or progressive people would say like, oh yeah, I, I saw an Asian thing or I went to an Asian play and I went to a Latino play, I went to women, people of color, this or whatever. And I think we all sometimes contribute to that, but within that, it's very important that we don't think we checked off the box of Asian or we checked off the box of, you know, Latino or whatever. Because within each of those groups, there's so much variety and so many different stories that we need to know. We tend to see more like, you know, European-based, Western and American stories as universal, but a lot of people don't experience those as universal, actually. And so why not have the stories and the and the, the, the theatrical work in the center that are currently seen as marginalized, eventually we have to see those as universal as well or as, as just as centralized and necessary. It's very important to put people of color, women of color, LGBT folks, disabled folks, people with various identities in these leadership roles as uh, the kind of role that I'm in. We don't see enough people in leadership who either actually connect with the communities that, that they might want to, to forward, um, but also there, there is something about being an insider, outsider. I, I'm using that term because there's a way that seeing myself reflected in the, 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 the community who's performing and, and doing theater, the theater was very important and transformative for me. But also them seeing someone that looks like me, it looks a little more like them, is, is very important and as an educator I don't see enough of myself in leadership roles and when I do the the, the impacts are possibly haven't been measured and captured enough but uh, are, are very powerful you know and in terms of really making a larger change we don't necessarily write these stories only for each other that these are actually um, necessary for everyone to see and learn and support